Scientists' shocking discovery in the Philippines that may shift our future. What if the world lied to you, told you your story began with colonization, that you were a footnote in someone else's history? But what if the truth was buried deep in the soil of the Philippines, where ancient humans walked before science said they could, where metal-eating plants and lost civilizations whisper of a forgotten origin? For years, they said we were late to the table of mankind. But the bones, the evidence, the silence now screaming from caves and mountains say otherwise. Maybe we didn't arrive last. Maybe we were the beginning. And if that's true, then everything they told us about who we are was dead wrong. This isn't just about history. It's about reclaiming power, pride, and place in a story that was always ours. Welcome to the Philippines, the true starting point of humanity. So imagine this, you book a flight to the Philippines. Why? Simple. You burned out. Life's been punching you in the gut lately. Boss won't quit breathing down your neck. Rents up. Gas is high. Your phone battery dies faster than your dreams. You need a break. You land in Cebu. And the moment you step off the plane, bam, the humidity slaps you. The air smells like fried garlic, ocean breeze, and possibility. Next thing you know, you're sipping fresh mango juice with your feet in powdery white sand that looks photoshopped in real life. It's paradise. Over 7,000 islands. Turquoise waters. Cliffs straight out of a fantasy novel. Locals who treat you like a cousin they haven't seen in years. There's karaoke echoing from a sorry sorry story. Kids playing basketball on a court made of broken pavement. And a sunset so stunning it makes you question every life decision that didn't lead here sooner. But then, something shifts. You hear about Benjo, a local fisherman, father of four, who's been fishing these waters for two decades. Last year, a Chinese coast guard ship nearly rammed his tiny wooden boat. No warning. No remorse. Just intimidation in the South China Sea, a hotbed of geopolitical tension. And suddenly, paradise feels complicated. Because the Philippines isn't just a postcard. It's a front line. A front line in a quiet war for territory, for identity, for truth. Here's where it gets crazy. While the world fixates on China's island building and naval games, scientists digging beneath Philippine soil are uncovering something far more explosive, ancient bones. Not just fossils, but evidence of a forgotten human species. Homo luzonensis, discovered in Kayao Cave in 2007. 67,000 years old. That's older than the first pyramids. Older than most timelines even allow. That changes everything we thought we knew about human evolution. And yet, barely anyone talks about it. Because this isn't just about bones. It's about pride, power, and a people whose story has been buried too long. It's about a nation balancing beach vibes and survival instincts, karaoke nights and war games, ancient legacies and modern chaos. So here's the promise. In this documentary, we are digging way deeper than the travel brochures and beach drone shots. We are uncovering the truth buried beneath the paradise, the plot twist no one expects from a country most people can't even find on a map without googling it. So if you've ever wondered why the Philippines is making headlines, from coral reefs to ancient bones, from Chinese incursions to world-shaking discoveries, don't go anywhere. Because what we are about to uncover could rewrite the entire origin story of humanity. Smash that like button if you're ready to see the Philippines like never before, and comment below. Have you ever been to a place that was way more than it seemed? Strap in. This story's just getting started. What if everything you've been taught about human evolution is dead wrong? Not just a little off, shockingly, wildly, flipping the textbook wrong. Because in the Philippines, one accidental dig just shattered two million years of scientific certainty. Flashback to 2018. Luzon Island. A brutal summer sun scorches a dig site in Kalinga. Local archaeologists are just looking for fossils, maybe animal bones. Nothing special. But what they uncover. A rhinoceros. Not just any rhino, a butchered one. Cracked bones. Cut marks. Tools nearby. Then the real bomb, radiometric dating puts it at 709,000 years old. That's 600,000 years earlier than anyone thought humans were even in the Philippines. Let that sink in. Before Homo sapiens even dreamed of walking upright, somebody was already here, breaking bones and building tools. Stone blades, hammer stones, sharpened flakes. This wasn't nature. This was intelligence. But here's the twist. No human bones were found. No skulls. No femurs. No footprints. Just the ghost of a presence. Like someone had walked in, left behind a crime scene, and vanished into thin air. So who did it? Homo erectus? The ancient globetrotter known to roam Asia? Shipwrecked hominins who drifted in on mangrove rafts during a storm? Or something else? 
And this mystery gets even weirder. In 2019, in Kayao Cave just 400 kilometers away, another shock. Scientists discovered a completely new species of human, Homo luzonensis. Tiny body, curved toe bones, a jaw that didn't match any known line. Estimated age, 50,000 to 67,000 years. Not old enough to butcher that rhino, but a clue, a piece of a much older story. Let me tell you about Lola Marie Tess, a retired school teacher from Tugagrau. All her life, textbooks taught her the islands were late to the party, that her ancestors came last. But when the KRO news broke, she gathered her grandkids and whispered, Anak, maybe we were here before them. Maybe we were first. Now ask yourself, if humans or proto-humans reached the Philippines 700,000 years ago, before boats, before maps, before recorded history, then the first ocean explorers on Earth weren't European. They were Asian, maybe Filipino. And if that's true, we need to rethink everything, where we came from, who we are, and how much of history is still buried beneath our feet. So what do you believe? Was it Homo erectus? Some lost ancestor? Or is this evidence of something we haven't even named yet? Drop your theory in the comments below. And don't go anywhere, because coming up next, we uncover the island where ancient humans shrank, evolved, and maybe, just maybe, survived in secret. Because this isn't just about the Philippines and Amol, this is about rewriting the story of all mankind. Imagine this. You're exploring the lush landscapes of Luzon, Philippines, when you stumble upon a cave, Kayai or cave. Inside, you find ancient bones and teeth. Sounds like the beginning of an adventure novel, right? But this isn't fiction. In 2019, researchers uncovered 13 fossil fragments in Kayai or cave, dating back between 50,000 and 67,000 years. These weren't just any bones. They belonged to a previously unknown human species, Homo luzonensis. Now, let's talk anatomy. These folks had fingers and toes with curves reminiscent of tree-climbing primates, like Australopithecus. It's as if evolution decided to mix and match traits, creating a unique blend of ancient and modern features. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. Around the same time, other human species roamed the Earth, Neanderthals in Europe, Denisovans in Asia, and the hobbit-sized Homo floresiensis in Indonesia. A world where multiple human species coexisted? Absolutely. So, what set Homo luzonensis apart? They managed to thrive in the dense jungles of the Philippines, isolated from other human populations. How did they get there? Did they raft across seas or walk during low sea levels? The mystery deepens. Let's bring this closer to home. Meet Lolo Ben, a local farmer from Cagayan. He grew up hearing tales of ancient beings in the mountains. When news of Homo luzonensis broke, he felt a connection to his ancestors, realizing that his heritage was part of a much larger human story. Now, here's a thought. If multiple human species once coexisted, what happened to them? Why are we the only ones left? Did we outcompete them, or did they vanish due to other factors? These questions remind us of our shared history and the fragility of existence. Before we wrap up, here's a challenge for you. Reflect on what it means to be human. Our history is filled with twists, turns, and surprises. The discovery of Homo luzonensis adds another chapter to our ever-evolving story. If this blew your mind, smash that like button and share your thoughts in the comments. What do you think happened to our ancient cousins? Let's discuss. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll delve into the mysteries of human evolution and explore how these discoveries reshape our understanding of the past. Imagine this. You're hiking through the lush forests of Luzon, Philippines, when you stumble upon a plant that seems ordinary at first glance. But this isn't your typical greenery. Meet Rhinoria nicolifera, a plant with a peculiar appetite. It eats metal. Specifically, it can absorb and store up to 18,000 micrograms of nickel per gram of dry leaf tissue. That's about 1.8% of its weight in nickel, a feat that's rare among plants. In fact, only about 0.5 to 1% of plant species native to nickel-rich soils have this ability. Discovered in 2014 by a team of Filipino scientists, including Dr. Edwin O. S. Fernando, this plant thrives in ultramafic soils rich in heavy metals, particularly in the Zambales region of Luzon. Its unique ability classifies it as a hyperaccumulator, making it a subject of interest for environmental scientists and ecologists. But why does this matter? Enter the concept of phytoremediation, a process where plants like Rhinoria nicolifera are used to clean up heavy metals from contaminated soils. This method offers a green alternative to traditional, often destructive, mining practices. 
Instead of excavating vast areas, we could cultivate these plants to extract metals naturally, a process known as phytomining. Imagine the environmental impact, reduced soil degradation, preservation of biodiversity, and a sustainable approach to metal extraction. It's a game changer in the making. However, there's a catch. Despite its potential, Rhinoria nicolifera is endangered. Its habitat is severely fragmented, and it's currently known to exist in only three adjacent localities, covering less than 500 square kilometers. The ongoing decline in its habitat quality poses a significant threat to its survival. Let's bring this closer to home. Consider the story of Maria, a local farmer in Zambales. She recalls her grandfather mentioning a magic plant that thrived where nothing else would grow. Years later, scientists identify this very plant as Rhinoria nicolifera. For Maria, it's more than a scientific discovery. It's a link to her heritage and a beacon of hope for sustainable farming practices in her community. Now, here's where you come in. What are your thoughts on using plants for environmental cleanup? Do you believe phytomining could replace traditional mining methods? Share your opinions in the comments below. And if this story intrigued you, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating insights into nature's hidden wonders. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll explore another remarkable discovery that's reshaping our understanding of the natural world. Ever felt like the walls could talk? In Angono, Rizal, they do. And trust me, they've got stories older than your grandma's grandma's grandma. These aren't your average doodles. These are the Angono Benanganan petroglyphs, 127 carvings dating back to around 3000 BC, making them the oldest known artworks in the Philippines. Imagine this. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors stood here, carving their beliefs, hopes, and stories into stone. They weren't just surviving. They were expressing, communicating, and connecting. My grandfather used to say these carvings were messages from the spirits. As a child, I'd sit here, tracing them with my fingers, feeling the pulse of our ancestors. Discovered in 1965 by national artist Carlos Butt Ong Francisco during a Boy Scout trip, these petroglyphs have since been a subject of fascination. But here's the kicker. Despite their historical value, these carvings are under threat. Urbanization, vandalism, and natural erosion are slowly erasing these ancient messages. It's like watching a priceless book being torn page by page. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. But we can still make a difference. By raising awareness, supporting preservation efforts, and visiting responsibly, we can ensure these messages from the Stone Age continue to inspire future generations. So, next time you're in Rizal, take a detail. Listen to the walls. They have stories to tell. What do you think these ancient carvings mean? Share your interpretations in the comments below. And if this journey through time moved you, smash that like button and subscribe for more tales from our rich history. Imagine stumbling upon a small, unassuming piece of metal by a riverbank. It's just 7 by 12 inches, but what it reveals? Monumental. This is the Laguna Copper Plate inscription. Discovered in 1987 near the mouth of the Lumbang River in Lumban, Laguna, Philippines. Dated to April 21, 900 AD, it's the earliest known written document in the country. The inscription details a debt pardon for a man named Namorin and his descendants, absolving them of a debt amounting to 865 grams of gold. But it's more than just a receipt, it's a window into a sophisticated society with established legal systems, trade networks, and diplomatic relations. My grandfather used to say, our history didn't start with colonization. This plate proves it. We had laws, trade, and culture long before any foreign flag was planted here. The inscription, written in Old Malay using the Kawi script, with Sanskrit and Old Javanese influences, mentions places like Tondo, Pilar, and Puliran, indicating active trade and communication with regions as far as Java and Sumatra. This artifact challenges the long-held belief that Philippine history began with Spanish colonization. It pushes back the timeline by over 600 years, showcasing a rich pre-colonial civilization. Yet, many are still unaware of this crucial piece of history. It's time we rewrite our narratives and acknowledge the depth of our heritage. So, next time someone tells you our history began with colonization, point them to the Laguna Copper Plate. It's a testament to our ancestors' legacy. What are your thoughts on the Laguna Copper Plate inscription? Share your insights in the comments below. And if this journey through history resonated with you, smash that like button and subscribe for more tales from our rich past. Imagine wandering through a dense Philippine jungle, the air thick with humidity and the scent of damp earth. Suddenly, you stumble upon a clearing where ancient stone coffins lie beneath towering trees. This isn't a scene from an adventure novel. 
It's the reality of Mount Kamhantic in Quezon province. Discovered in 2011, the limestone tombs of Kamhantic are a testament to a sophisticated pre-colonial society. Carved directly into solid limestone, these 15 tombs date back to between 890 and 1030 AD. They weren't just graves. They were intricately designed coffins, indicating advanced burial practices. Archaeologists unearthed teeth still intact, shards of pottery, tools, and animal bones. These findings suggest a community with complex rituals, artistry, and beliefs long before Western colonization. However, this historical treasure wasn't preserved untouched. Treasure hunters had already looted the site, stealing lids, skeletons, and artifacts. A thousand years of heritage, desecrated for profit. Yet, what remained was undeniable. This was a civilization. Not merely a tribe or village, but a people with rituals, architecture, art, and belief systems. The site is now part of the Buena Vista Protected Landscape, a 280-hectare forest area declared protected in 1998. Efforts are ongoing to preserve what's left and to study the site further. Imagine the stories these tombs could tell. The lives lived, the traditions upheld, the artistry expressed, all carved into stone beneath the trees. What are your thoughts on the Camhandic tombs? Share your insights in the comments below. And if this journey through history resonated with you, smash that like button and subscribe for more tales from our rich past.